still we have yet to see Curse's middle lane. I know Ori is on uh, Ori on his band. Maokai is still very strong. Uh, sorry, not Maokai. Uh, Skarner? Not Skarner either. Uh oh, uh, you're going. Cho'Gath, hold off. No, no, no. They just take this champion. Why? <laughs> Rivington, stop messing with me. Oh my god. And Morgana would still be a very strong champion. Morgana, how did I miss this? Nah, Nautilus. It started with M. God, stop, please. <laughs> Jax Morgana, very All strong right. combo there. Good fight comp. Very good I kind of worry comp. about the uh, Jax. Jax Vlad matchup. I, oh, whoa, they're going Olaf. The I don't think I mean, Olaf there's... works well with your team comp. I really don't. Oh, okay, that's good, that's good. They locked in Jax. Definitely synergizes better, I, I believe. <sighs> And this is what Nia Nia Tonto. Yes, I am. I can finally <laughs> talk about it. So Nia Tonto <laughs> likes to play Caitlyn Middle. It's a very specific counter pick to a lot of champions he feels like are very strong right now. So against Morgana mid, he's gonna play Caitlyn. It's gonna be very, very interesting to see how he look to transition from the mid game to the late game. There it is, the switch is going around. Quite a bit of cleanse being flashed as well on this team. Typically very though, kite, very Reddit kite Nation team. picks Nunu with this comp to have like a a, a strong jungle, but a uh, but one that helps scale their two AD carries. And I'm very surprised they went to go with Malka here because Nunu would would be an absolutely great pick. But they early picked Ma they picked Malka so early they weren't able to set up the jungle counter pick because Nunu does really 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 well against Mumu in the jungle. I'm trying to, yeah, I'm trying to just compare that to the Zyra pick in, in late game team fights and crowd control. But Nunu, that Nunu Cog is definitely something that Wild Turtle relied on in his Infinity Edge composition because he didn't have to go for any attack speed. He had it before he even had his boots, really. Uh, yeah, it's still the team comp, still very solid. Uh, just as long as they can transition well out of the the early game. The one thing that might be problematic is how well Vlad does. This team comp depends on Vlad to tra transition well into the mid game, or else they have no AP damage. So Vlad has to do well in his lane, or else their mid game team fights will be really, really bad against teams who just stack armor. That's gonna really play to Void Boy's advantage, that level 1, 2, 3, Jaff, 4, Jax. Just in the beginning, he's so strong, and Vlad's still waiting to ramp up towards, you know, a portion of the mid part of the game, level 10, or er, 10 minutes, level 7, 9. So we'll have to see how that lane goes. I feel like Curse got a very comfortable bottom lane for themselves, like just prime picks, Ezreal into Elements Fiddlesticks as well. So they'll they'll definitely be able to counteract anything I think Lemon Nation and Wild Turtle can put out. That's for that that composition they can stay far enough back that everything's gonna look telegraphed if they want to aggress. Right, Wild Turtle and Nian Tonto both picking cleanse, so it's gonna be very, very hard for Morgana and Mubu to have a, a high Morgana Mubu and Fiddlesticks to have a high impact in this game. It's really gonna come down to Kirsch and Evade, 100% Kirsch and Evade. Uh, they have the better level one, uh, with, and they have the stronger. Uh, they have, this, they even have the stronger poke. They, if they invade, they will do a lot of work on them. Especially invading against a team with two defensive summoners that can't be aggressive early. All, that that means the world. Even if you don't have, even if you have these similar CCs, if you're down one exhaust, one ignite, it can mean the difference between winning and losing a team fight. So really. I would like Curse to go play very, very, very aggressive right now. It looks and like we may find a little bit of that. We'll have to see what these teams do. Definitely playing this one safe and cautious. You see Reddit Nation already placing one ward? Two wards? No, no, no. He started W, right? Oh, no, Sapling no, no. Ward. Sapling, my bad. So, so there's one, push one out. ward on, uh, on their blue entrance. They've done this in the past before. It's a very, very, very safe opener. Typically this is what Red Nation does. They don't look to force too much. They just go for the very safe openers. However, these openers can be punished really easily. They are actually thinking that they're trying to completely invade, giving as much vision as they can. Hi, pretty low on mana here. He's going to get a big pull for his blue buff and that'll help him to get around the jungle. And, Honestly, uh, like, if, if I was cursed, I would just ran straight to blue. Ran to blue, warded it. Like, they could do nothing to fight them off. Yeah, they pushed them down to the bottom lane. Right, and then you can look to put pressure on blue buff, which is where high wants to start. Has Unfortunately, curse going through the much safer route. I don't agree with that. Uh, especially when you have such a strong level one, you should really be looking to take advantage of, of things like that. Especially without Coley seeing Vlad, I really agree with you for the fact that they should have just straight gone towards blue. We're gonna get help from Mao on this one. He's very low mana, and like I said, big pull for his blue. But it's okay. Uh, yeah. Both teams start out very even, so so Red Nation actually was expecting to start behind for the level one. But they start out okay. 
and that's that's definitely good for them. And curse splits even as well, and that's that's better than going back. So or splitting badly. So it's still both teams. We'll we'll just see how the lanes play out. Wow, that awesome base shot damage by Elements. Middle level one is just the bounces, insane. and they're actually going to pressure this a little bit. The ward goes out. They don't exactly. They know Maokai is still on that side of the jungle at this time, so they kind of back off. They're going to like that damage that was, though. They really don't need to do anything other than that to start such a zoning. Good play by Elements. That single handedly won them the bottom lane for for the immediate. Uh, yeah, this right probably now. two levels for the next two levels that. Single handedly forced uh, one or two health pots by both both champions as well as missed they made them miss I think almost a full wave. Three or four creeps of the full wave. Wild Turtles level one with zero XP. Wild Nation also has zero XP at level one, and you have four abilities now that they can be hit with. So much damage coming in. Cop just one mystic shot, a full bar from Wild Turtle. He is just crushing down. He's actually doing over a hundred damage right now with that one to one on the mystic shot. We got a, so just a wait top lane from high. The potion on from Boy Boy. If you're gonna go, go now. He's only getting more health at this time. And uh, he's, he's, he's waiting for Boy to go in to bait it. And so Nian Tonto has to blow flash middle. I think Yuzuki's playing a little too different here. He, he I think he's reading this that, that high has to be somewhere in lane. They're still gonna try to go. He did take one step too early. The pool right away for the really cr crowd control, maybe? That was a really bad pool. There was he had no damage. CC. Yeah. He decided he didn't Q, Q before that, and he really kind of didn't have enough damage to work around work, work with that. They went. They only did that gank to try to force the ghost. They, I don't think they really expected to kill at level two, and Vlad really doesn't do much damage. Right. Yeah, they they easily could have gotten more damage, but yeah, they went for the pool right away. They're kind of zoning out this lane, so boy, boy, not gonna have too much trouble at the turret. But this bottom lane is also pushing very hard as they see Maokai top. Our cop and elements trying to carry the snowball just that much further. Threes to level twos here as they keep the advantage and just trying to crush these waves into the tower. If you're a lucky man, you play fiddle because if your E bounces multiple times on a single <laughs> champion, you automatically win the bottom win. Does that mean cops should play fiddle too? Uh, if fiddle could be AD, I'm sure he would be playing that champion. Right now, Vlad with very strong control of top lane right now. Boy having no mana, no health pots. Yuzuki knows this. He's gonna shut the lane. He's got two health pots. He's looking good. And there's no way Boy's gonna come up. So High kind of is wasting his time up there. He yep. wanted to make sure though. He should actually come out to push. Oh, really, really smart here. This is gonna be nice for Yuzuki. He's yeah. gonna be going back 700 gold. He's 1200 already above Jax. So Boy All Boy, right. a little bit behind. How's middle lane look? Uh, Jackie is behind by 60s. Yes, nothing too crazy. Nian actually stops attacking the blue raids because Hai tells him that he wants them. I'm, <laughs> I'm almost exactly sure that's what it is. Cause Maybe. I, I don't think I've ever seen a mid lane give up a raid camp unless the jungler says something. I haven't seen too much from Saint. Really, Mumu, pretty good after you know level 3 you get your bandage toss, but he's keeping himself in the jungle. Maybe just looking for that 6 presence. His lanes have been quite pushed. He doesn't have to do anything for Curse and, or for Elements and Cop. He, he, he doesn't really have much of a choice with Cop. Probably just get out with uh, the troll pool. So he's kind of just biding his time until he has enough. Doesn't have the feel yet, but he's pieced together two parts of it. Bottom lane, 20 plus CS behind with the wave equalized. That's really bad. I can't help but think that uh, they're a uh, curse really outplaying this orb is Red Nation bottom lane. Hi, right, just waiting off in the distance. Thing is, I don't think Hai can make a play here. He has to look. He's gonna have to blow flash. Flash and shift to get it, but Saints just coming up. This is a very, very bad idea. They read it well. The flash is in. High is going all in on this one. He does get the arcane shift out. The bandage toss onto High. Can Lemonation get the crowd control in to help him? No, first blood going to cop in the bottom lane counter gang. Yeah, no, Saint predicted that very, very well because he realized that there's Ooh, only one way he could go. bleeding down pretty hard, but the potion should keep him going. Yeah, Izuki, luck. Uh, very, very close. And Yuzuki is a mistake because Boy doesn't have, doesn't have the mana to leap strike. Oh, but he bought a mana pot? There's no way he can, he can all in on top of tower so he can come out alive. But never mind. He does not have Ignite, he does not have Ghost. Yeah, he won't come out alive, but he can get a kill here. Counter oh, I thought he was going to have Counter Strike. It was just his stance move. I was like, is he really going to do this? It's pretty far. What? High now noticing he was down bottom. Gonna start heading towards top. Seeing that low health for Yuzuki. Knowing there may be pressure there soon. There's a counter strike. Goes out. He gets the stun. One more. Oh, the pool. And just enough time. Beautiful job by Yuzuki. And he says, that's enough for me. I'm heading back.
Kizuki playing very nice under pressure. Keeping up with the CS, he he still has flash, and Void blew both of his summers for that. So he actually him, he's actually doing pretty pretty fine in lane. I don't know whether or not that was a, a smart to go CDR boots first item, but still he seems that like was he's scary doing okay. for Void. He actually went in when both of his summers were down because he almost killed Vlad with the Ghost Ignite just before. So he was really trying to go all in. Right, and Saint first kill buys an Oracles up with, with the rest of his gold pretend. Very very smart. He's able, he's able to deny a lot of pressure in the lane, so he's gonna go run through the river and look for the wards now. He's <laughs> just farming, so yeah, farming mid and farming on, uh, well this is fantastic, this is real multitasking ladies and gentlemen. Nian Tanso double farming. Saint Vicious right on the outside, getting vision from those creeps, they look for the dark binding, that would have been a perfect combination. The high was there, but I don't think he would have been able to save uh, Nian Tanso in time. Cop. And elements now sixes to the level five, so they even have ultimates to use in this lane. Well, we got one six. Elements has been off the CS a little bit; hasn't been able to get in fully. But they're kind of, they're not really they don't want to aggress. They're not looking for kills in this bottom lane. They're just looking to completely win this and that that slow win again coming into play for Chris. Yeah, as Ryu goes back first, buys a BF sword. I would like to lane huge on top of Kogmon. Seeing that a lot more lately, Kogma going for the defense and the sustain, even with this team. Like you said, the defensive summoner spells are allowing these lanes to play super aggressive in the first place. Right, Caitlyn middle is not doing anything with farming. Caitlyn more really just fine with just farming out the middle lane. So right now the plays should be should have, should be focused on top and bottom. For the junglers, that's where the junglers should be looking. The fiddle, or really, really the Zyra that brings a lot of crowd control, but I feel like if uh, if Saint were to come down, they could really 3v2 this turret. They've had him push back to it the entire time. The turret's quite low. They could probably capitalize on that after, but Saint is moving towards top. Saint can't really dive at this at this time. He doesn't have any defensive items outside of a uh, very That's strong true. ruby crystal. Quite squishy. And so if, if he looks to dive and loses an Oracle, they will be so far behind. Losing an Oracle is the equivalent of losing another champion at this at this level, because 400 gold is just so much more, more at this small. He's taking really a good amount of pound there. Okay, let's come back. A movie quick. should, yeah, they should have seen the movie there. What? Okay, yeah, yeah. he backs out, and then the <laughs> movie just goes ahead and clears the ward. He just wanted a bit more sustain. He's gonna knock that one out. There's not a few wards. He got some traps around that he can clean up. Well, we do see Niantanso trying to do what he can to keep his farm up 105 to 97, and that is attributed to the Wraiths as well as Wolves. <laughs> he goes to take his Wolves. Oh, wow. Najaki takes the Wraith. Very smart play by Jaki, and oh, cool. very, cool very good top. pull by Yazuki. Yazuki just dodging a bandage toss top from St. Vicious as he is persistent after taking down that ward. You think you give somebody a little bit of comfort, you get your ward taken out, and you're like, ah, I can kind of push this. St. really just trying to work off of that right now. Bottom lane, Lemonation of Wild Turtle, gaining a little bit of ground. They're still behind in this lane very much, but they're able to farm the ultimate coming out from Fiddle. Wow. He is going to be going on to uh, Lemonation. Wild Turtle going for the cleanse. They pick up one kill. Can he get the attacks down? The Mystic Shot hits, but Curse Cop out of mana. Pi coming down. He may put himself in a bad position, but he looked to soak up the experience in this lane, so it does not go to waste. I can't help but think if Cop actually hit his ult on something, they would have <laughs> they would have gotten a double kill. But they still came out Straight on top Straight field goal. Uh, it was it was just a bad fear, like the fear feared him left. Yeah. And uh, Watsuno ran right, so they just got a field goal of the Nolte, which kind of sucks. But they, I'm pretty sure they could have picked up close to a double kill. I like the ch I like the choice of fear though. Usually you go in, you're like 80 carry, but Wild Turtle has cleanse, forced him to cleanse and flash by just hitting him with the silence right after. So great job by Elements just mechanically in the, in the start of that fight. Yuzuki trying to get these minions off his turret. Voidboy still a pretty good handle on that lane. Wow, the flash twisted advance. High caught under the turret and he kind of just turns around with the fear. It worked perfectly for him and they pick up an easy kill. Wow, Curse's bottom lane really doing work this, at this time. And Jax is pushing ahead of top lane right now. Uh, Jax definitely scaling better than almost every champion in the game. Uh, it's a huge threat now that he got through the early levels very, very easily. And Yazuki is in for a rough time before because he has no spell vamp right now. Still trying to finish that Revolver Saint just on the outside. Beautiful bandage toss coming around. No time. He does get the pool, but the Ignite is still ticking. Hemo Plague not going to be a problem. They are going to push this wave, possibly get a little prep damage on the turret. If not, just take it down all the way. 
And we'll see Nijaki getting some damage in mid. Niantanso becoming very aggressive now with his BF and Berserker grab. And he's going to keep throwing this lane in. Every time Nijaki even comes to soil, he'll take a few shots from Caitlyn. You can see Niantanso just positioning himself for extra shots and free damage all the time. All right, this isn't the ideal uh, champion that he even wants to play against middle. Like, he wants to play against something that's, that's a lot... Uh, harder to deal ca with Caitlyn. Morgana is just such a safe champion, able to farm right. pretty much at any range and it, being able to shove back. So while the Atatas is winning the CS4, it's like it's not really much of an advantage for him to be middle rather than another AP. Still doing well out farming that lane. 20 CS in the favor of Boy Boy's lane, but 20 CS in the favor of that mid lane for Nian Tanso. Bottom so, lane's behind I'm, almost yeah. 50 CS. <laughs> just to top, a tad. Top, just top, a little top, bit. Don't worry about it. Three kills and 50 CS up. Jeez. He has a 12 minute thirst as well as a ruby crystal to make for the phage. Seen a lot of fast plays in this game. A lot of times where they're just not worrying about sustain. They know they've got the control of that lane and just the way Elements plays it very safe. With Fiddlesticks, Cop feels very, very safe to just buy up that damage and not have to worry about keeping himself alive. Yuzuki just getting crushed down. A fourth of his health goes away from him. And Power Strike and that auto attack reset. Wow, the leave about range. to come back up. He is definitely within range. But yeah, no, he's still in range. Going in, throws down the ulti. Looks like he's going to have to get out of this one as high as there at the exactly perfect time. Good pressure, just Void Boy up top the entire time. Really not giving Yuzuki any time to get back into this matchup. He is getting back to Golems for the farm, but just finishing with his revolver, going for the cooldown boots so he can just output damage that way and instead of really just being new Karas. So we'll see if that works for them in the late game composition. Nothing too interesting happening in terms of jungle play. You see Saint controlling the game. He got an early, uh, he got an early assist, able to finish off the gold pretend and getting a level five oracles. It has caused him to have control of the map this game, and it's just it comes down to that a lot of times. So they get an early. Oh oracles wow, and elimination! Just, that ultimate from Elements just coming in, and they, they, they just keep getting free kills left and right without really taking any any damage. Right now, that bottom lane is lost it's really, really hard. Typically, I'm like, well, if Kogma loses by CS, it's not a big deal. But he's losing by almost, he's losing by 50, 40 CS. And then went for a third Doran, so we'll probably have to, uh, obviously going to sell that at some point, but that's just going to stop even if he wants to get a Zeal right away. Zeal is actually quite a cheap item for what you get out of it on Kogma. So he's that much farther behind looking at his gold right now. He's only got 738. He can't even piece together the dagger and gloves, so he's really kind of hurt for damage here. The Bloodthirster being stacked up. At 31 already, 9 away from being full at a 3-0 and 1 cop. Just one of those AD carries you cannot get in this position and still expect to uh, win the game on the opposing team. Vladimir top actually equalizing CS with, with uh, Jax. I'm not quite sure, but it seems this re revolver helped out a lot. Being able to uh, split the lane evenly. Yeah, that... I think that Jax transfusion is, being on full cooldown now, especially with the lucidity boots, really helping. Right, game. that three second cooldown on Kino. Yep. Oh, four second cooldown, my bad. Four, yeah, four. Is a, is a real, real, real uh, harass killer. Yeah, it actually is three with the lucidity boots. Hi, still kind of paying. He's, he's been seeming to get around. He's right now. Eight and about a fourth oh, of a Snoop level. Is gonna cut high right here. Oh, in the jungle. And get the kill with elements. They, they are going to throw down fear. both ultimates. There's the fear coming out. High can't do much. He throws on Arcane and he flashes away to keep himself alive. That, that was, ultimate stops so much damage. That was a really bad CC stack. They stacked the fear as as well as the uh, Moomoo at the same time. Had they staggered it, we would have almost 100% gotten that kill. Nobody at the top turret, but they see Yuzuki there. He did get himself out of position. A great grab into the bush. Blind grab there. Hemo play goes down, but he only hits one. Fiddlesticks taking turret damage. Easy enough to get the fear and drain on. They pick up another kill. Six to zero, Skara. Right now against Reddit Nation. Yeah, Curse looking exceptionally strong. But there's really, it's really Curse's game to lose at this point. They're up 5k gold at 16 minutes. It's quite a bit. Caitlyn, the only lane that's, that seems seemingly doing well right now. That's CS. <laughs> yeah, and it doesn't, like, wow. it's great, but it doesn't really accomplish much right now because Nian can't impact the rest of 
of his team. Not at all. Like, if that was a Karthus, that would be fantastic. He's got over 200 CS at 16 minutes in the game. Wraiths and Wolves have been his. He's definitely put his number on them. Not even giving them to High. Maybe that's why we've seen High spending so much time in lane looking for the ultimate. There's the cleanse. Yep, pushing he, yourself he over. Neotoxic doing an excellent job getting away from that gank. And he gets the tower as well, which means he can finally look to maybe roam around. He has enough for his infinity edge, and he really needs to grab it. These fights are happening, and he's just tickling people, like paper cuts right now, without any damage for himself. So if he can get that out, he can just start crushing down. A few shots to Nijak, he would change this fight up. But they're all low health coming in. He does hit the essence, gets it down. A beautiful job, but it looks like he may be two all in. The attack from the plant, and he does not get taken down. A beautiful job by his team to peel off the damage. Well, the rest of it that could have happened, and they see High going down. That's the second time we've actually seen him just kind of come to the lane and go down without really having any effect to the situation. Right, I think that's the first time I've ever seen Cop do some really aggressive play right there. Right. He, yeah, he no, yeah, our, to, like, offensive uh, flash game. Astral, yeah, into, into uh, a Q Ignite. Really, really solid play right there. Bottom lane, Cog looks to be taken down here possibly. Nope, Wild Turtle able to make it out. That Trinity Force not finished yet for Jack, so he doesn't have that movement speed to get that catch on. Lemon Nation going back, Wild Turtle trying to farm up here, still a 33 CS behind Cop. Cop about to finish this Triforce. Nope, actually he's quite poor. He bought himself some items. So he's looking to finish that. He just needs to get the Sheen in his favor. So there's 1,200 and I believe another 400 some gold. Get himself that item. And he's actually very far ahead right now. 4 0 and 1 to a 0 0 and 0. And as we say, you know, the kills can, depending on who you're killing, high value targets, it can amount to about 20 CS apiece. So you can just add that right onto the tally. Cops so far ahead in this game. And we've seen, Scar, that these teams have kind of been spreading out the kills and just the way it's been happening uh, across the game, saying, you know, two here, two here, but with Cop this fat and this in control of his lane and now the other lanes, it's going to be really scary for Reddit. Right. Cop is almost ahead by almost full oh, item. Jeez. It's going to be really, really hard for for them to reach that late game potential that double AD ha carry has, that made the late game potential because they've already lost in the game. At this point, it's no, not possible to, for them to fight. Two underfed AD carries fighting against Jax is it's not going to work out well. Cop has 1,500 more gold than the highest gold of Neon Tonsil. Right, so Cop is, is fed beyond belief right now, which means that they can't lift the fight until Kog'Maw at least picks up one item, which is going to maybe take another four or five minutes. Well, he is going straight for the Phantom Dancer. He has a bit of the Doran's item, so he's really relying on just that W. Boy Boy going straight into this fight. He is now pinched in the middle, but his team right on his backside. St. Vicious looking for the toss. He goes for the oh, flash toss. Wow. He gets it. There's just too much for the cleanse to push off, and they are going to get another kill. The free kill's just coming in in spades right now for Curse. Insanely impressive flash Q right there from, from St. Yeah. Able to get the uh, Wild Turtle and able to blow not only his cleanse, but also get the kill immediately after with his ulti. Looks like they got good damage onto Lemon. He may go down here in that tormented soil, forced to throw out his ulti and clear this wave so they cannot continue to put pressure down. Oh, the ulti true shot just missing to the left side of Lemon. He is safely able to back. A great job by Nian Tanso, seeing what, the, what was happening down bottom, starting to take objectives for his team. And that top lean looks pretty good for them. Dragon is down. You could say he makes some moves onto that top lane if it's not farmed and pushed by one of the members of Curse anytime soon. Saiyan will probably finish his rounds up there if he's going around this blue buff to be donated over one in that last fight. So they're going to have two blue buffs on the map. Everything is working in Curse's favor right now. Right. Saiyan even has a 40 CS lead up a high. And I'm pretty sure Red Nation is just pr feeling pretty demoralized right now. Not only did they lose bottom lane, but they ended up losing top as well, as well as the jungle. All the jungle ganks ended up getting turned or were fairly ineffective, thereby negating any possibility of Red Nation winning like the early or the mid game. They have to push for this late game that really isn't a guaranteed win for them, which is kind of... Uh, it's kind of... it's really bad. Yeah. Having Caitlyn mid, well, you know, great factor and it can apply great to the fights, but not having that, that area of effect there to be fed as well as taking the jungle away from high who's not having the best game as well is, is really hurting them more than helping them. Their composition is kind of just crumbling on itself now. Right, and they're doing... Oh, they're, they're looking for... Uh, 
Just missing a bandage toss. Throws the ultimate down, though. He does not have cleanse. Does not have flash. They're looking to really force this fight. Lemon Nation to go down very fast here. Boy Boy taking good damage. Niantanso has his damage now. The Zeal Infinity Edge. And you can see the impact it's putting into these fights. Looking for the ace in the hole. Does not find it. And they will be pressuring this a little bit harder. We have not seen Reddit Nation look this confident in their fights. They're quite low health. And they were still going pretty aggressive. Curse forced to back off from that engagement after just the support. Doesn't seem like Dragon will be up anytime soon. Three minutes spawn on that. We're 22 minutes into the game. Quite a few core items have been finished. Not really enough to strike up a Baron fight for either of these teams yet. 34,000 to 28,000 as Curse has just completely dominated this game, carrying momentum the end of the last game. And the bottom lane doing everything it needed to. Cop and uh, Elements just continuously pushing out, allowing St. Vicious to really move around. And then when St. was present from the jungle, awesome leap strike wow. stop from the Arcane Smash. Beautifully timed there by High. But in that bottom lane, Saint was just able to really counter gank that first time, get ahead, and they've had such a good game because his presence has been amazing. Right, Roy just looking to put pressure bottom and they, all you have to do is get Baron. Now, however, if Curse gets this Baron stolen, they have a good shot about it, but I don't think, or, or Reddit Nation has a good shot about coming back, but I don't think Curse is going to make that mistake because they saw how well it worked out for them in, in advance, and also because I think they're a much more experienced team at getting, uh, at getting Barons, like, stolen. Surprising to see. Well, well, they do have a good amount of damage. I figured that Vlad would really go for that sustain, harass, or keep somebody in the fight with uh, a Rylas build, but he's going for. He actually is going for the damage after getting Lucidity instead of Sork Boots. Right, he, he really needs to go for damage here. With the with him being the only AP carry in the game and the rest of the other team That's stacking true. armor, they do he has to be doing the mid. majority of the damage in the team. So yep. rushing Death Cap here is not a bad option for him. Tonso just looking, looking to put out harassment here. Ace in the hole on a 60 second cooldown. You're looking to have that up quite often, so he's really just throwing it out there. Trying to get the lane push, trying to push back Curse. If they find something lucky, they will initiate on it. Now that they have most of those items in, 402 Boy Boy, very strong, or 402 rather Cop, very strong. Finishing that Triforce finally. Has himself a red elixir for this next fight. They want to close this one down quick. Ian Hansa also almost hitting the 300 CS mark at under 25 minutes. So he's been, he's been doing a great job at farming uh, both the, the raid camps, but <laughs> unfortunately, or the raising the wolf. Camps, right, right. Unfortunately, that doesn't really seem to do much for the team. He has to really just farm until he gets three items. Last Whisper, PD, and if I and hopefully by then he'll be able to do okay. Ooh, boy boy could find himself out here. It's gonna be a caliber net through the wall. Does he choose to turn and fight this one? He could have stunned that one down, but I think they're just mm, yeah, she does have a scepter. There would have been sustain there for her. A very good choice by Boy Boy to block or step off of that one. So you can see a really nice push coming from Cop up top. Nobody really recognized. He just pushed that all the way down to the second tier. Now face to face with Wild Turtle again. The offensive flash throws down the cleanse. They will be able to pick him up here under the turret. A very good movement from Curse, knowing that would be defended as they got top. And they just pushed on it as hard as possible. That Baron is ripe for the taking. They have the Blood Thirster and two Triforces. They may be able to do this with the tank of, uh, of Saint right now. Everything working in their favor, Skara. Saint getting that first blood, buying that Oracles. He has not died yet, and that has paid out huge for them in map control. Yep. That's typically the strategy is if, if you ever get ahead as a jungler, you get an early Oracles and you just yep. look to sweep. Because by sweeping, you create pressure and you relieve pressure. And that's pretty much your, your the biggest job you can do as a jungler. Zero kills down the board and kills for everyone. Even Elements picking up a kill for himself. A lot of money being distributed in this 10-0 game for Curse, and they're all really getting the items necessary to synergize with each other very well. The Glacial Shroud coming out for Mumu, getting more tanky, getting those bandage tosses up quicker, and Saint's been initiating perfectly. We really don't see him on a Mumu too much, but with this the play lately, not even the fact that he's building the DFG like Snoopy did in the CLG game, he's just been such an effective jungler, and really, as like you said, making a mark and coming back lately. 
right? I, we kind of just have to wait till Kagwa picks up another item and Kaylin picks up her last whisper. They can, like, they can potentially look to to take poke on the curse. They really have to hope that they don't force Baron to be now and be between uh, Kaylin gets like another fifty CS. So curse staying true to the strategy this tournament, slow and steady wins the race, but kind of extremely slow on this one as they finally get that mid turret down. They've gone top and bottom, and they're just going <laughs> every objective that they can. The last time they did it, and they play, I forgot who it was, but they they had all they had two inhibitors for about ten minutes in the game. They continued on, finally got the third inhibitor when they really didn't even need to. They're just waiting, they're biding their time to continue the snowball. Keeping pressure on this mid here. Jax trying to split push bottom lane. The Intanso forced off of the fight. And this is looking prime for Curse to take down this turret. Mm, that's definitely a free turn for Curse. Might, might even open up a good strong barrier chance after this. The majority of Reddit Nation right on their heels as they're clearing this wave. I thought high actually, yep, right on their back. Throwing a sapling into the bush. They have it warded quite well. Throwing a plant in there to get themselves some vision as well. And a very nice Kogma ulti gives vision to the entire team making their way around. Curse was really trying to, I think, bait that out, come back around uh, Red Nation if they were to go for the Baron. Saints build is exactly. Oh, well, actually, no. He didn't go to the Abyss in this game because they didn't have 2 AP. But it looks very, very similar to builds I've seen before on both uh, Malphite and uh, Malkai. Right. As well as Sneak Rage. Ooh, the amount of poke that they can do with Ezreal Q as well as Morgana Q. If Morg Bind hits someone, they can follow up with Ezreal ulti as well as Saint Q, and they can one shot pretty much anyone they, they hit. Still poking as well. <laughs> Tonso just throwing off Calibernet, trying to dodge some of the damage. A Saint Vicious is right there for the bandage toss. It's the flash initiate, but he shifts away, brings high into a bad spot. They're gonna lose one right there. Saint Vicious taking way too much damage from four, but here comes Boy Boy from the right side, crushing down. Yuzuki forced to flash out high, falling as well. And it's going to be onto Kalen Ken. Elements catch up for his second kill of the game. Like I said, everybody getting kills, and we finally have a death on Curse's side. Saint Vicious going down valiantly as he tanked the entire team. Everybody really, once High was jumped past that fight, Skara, they only had Saint to shoot, and once all their abilities were on cooldown, Boy Boy entered the fight. Right, Boy really coming in at an ideal time. Uh, they almost ended up losing that due to how much K damage Kaylin did. Like, Amumu didn't think that she did that much damage, and Kaylin almost killed her in three hits with off like a crit, one or two crits. May not happen as easy next time. The Sunfire Cave, Frozen Heart for Amumu. Trying to shut that down. We're going to see that fight one more time in the initiation. We'll just see how much they had to focus Amumu. Yeah. High goes in. There's uh, the Arcane shift out. And Saint there. says, no, you guys don't get near my team. You're just going to attack me. And that leaves Voiboy to jump in from the right side. Just really good separation there by Saint in the fight. Yeah, it's just it's just unfortunate that they were so be far behind in terms of levels. They could have potentially won that. Like had Kaylin had enough items to kill Jax off that uh, right. ulti, and he could have looked to turn on, and he could have put more damage onto that Morgana, and maybe Kaylin could have carried this. He, he, but they were just so far behind. The current score is fifteen to one. They're down almost what fifteen k gold, which is almost a point at which most teams would sur or not most teams would surrender, but most teams would find it very hard to come back from. And so it seems like Jax is looking to go get Wild Turtle here, but wow, he gets out by the very, very uh, short margin, small margin. And the end still farming in mid. It has slowed down a bit as his team is forced to farm everything and really share the experience here. 17s and 15s on the side of Curse, and we have 16s and 13s. However, Nian Tonso is actually the only 18 in the game right now, so we can see how much he is affecting this for his team. Really, we said it in the beginning of the tournament, he still plays any AP carry like an AD, so playing Caitlyn in mid is just really home for him in a, in a shorter lane. It works out well, and we can see just how, how well he's playing for his team. 15 to 1, though. I got to give credit to Reddit Nation for really kind of putting up 
the, the defenses here. They have been beaten down in most of these fights, but they're still alive in this one. It could really come down to something big here. The Baron is just going to make Curse so strong. The regeneration, I don't think there's enough damage on uh, Reddit Nation to stop this, but they can't do it under the turret. Right, Kogba only has one item to protect the as well as four, three or four, and so, so, so much of an, of an item difference that it's like maybe, maybe Reddit Nation can fight the game, a, a fight on terms on their terms, but even if they do, just simply the item difference could cause each of these fights. Here it is there, just not even worried about it. Neotanso trying to throw out some peacemakers and deter them from doing damage, but Cop, no worries there. Giving zero Fs as they push down onto the Nexus turrets. Still, we've just seen Boy Boy off from the team the whole time. Such a controlled game in the 4-1 split. And really, Reddit Nation has not been able to answer on any of these engagements. The Guardian Angel up on Jax, the Guardian Angel up on Cop. So they can even bait out something and pull these guys out from under their turret. There's the ultimate. Missing the Mystic Shot is high. Eats it for his teammate. And he is going to... Lemon Nation is going to make it out by the skin of his teeth. Team Yantanso trying to push off the top wave. And like I said, Curse going at it every time. Steady, uh, slow and steady. Taking down every inhibitor and everything they need to. They just really crush down Reddit Nation here. Scar, this looks to be the last push by them. Reddit Nation, they can't even engage. There it is, actually onto St. Vicious. He throws down his ulti, grabbing three members. Wild Turtle able to sit on the back and do a lot of damage. We see Neontanso on the right side. They may be able to thwart this off a little bit. Keep themselves alive for a little bit longer. A lot of damage coming there. Morgana has to block a Nijacky. Very low on HP. The beautiful Zanya's there to pull high in. And it looks like they will be able to go back onto the Nexus here. Curse pulling this one out and kiting beautifully in the fight. A GG comes out. We see Neontanso falling. They're going to finish this off on Wild Turtle. And they're going to finish off the Nexus to take Reddit Nation out of the tournament. Ouch. With a crushing the feet. To be honest.